Hi, welcome back to Kelsey Ed, and today we're going to be looking at the task three solution for the wildlife pre release material that is paper two two. Remember to check which scenario you are doing. This is the wildlife park. If you did not see task one or task two, then please check the link in the description or the computer science playlist up here where you can find not only those two solutions but also some advice on how to approach this as a programming code um, versus a pseudocode and a number of other videos that are designed to help you to revise for this syllabus as our exams are coming up soon. So in this task what we're checking for is ensuring the best value booking for the customer. So if there is a better booking price available that offers better value, then we're going to present that. Now I'd like to note that this is kind of open to interpretation. They don't give you a lot of information on how to test that here. So there may be more than one solution for this. And if you don't think mine is the best one, please put your ideas in the comments below and get a discussion going and think about the other possible ways you can answer it. But this is my approach to the solution. At the end of the last video, we had calculated our total bill that was made up of the ticket costs plus the extra costs and they were presented with a booking number and then an option to rebook if they wanted to. Well, we're no longer going to present this final bill at this stage. So I'm actually just gonna comment that right out. And then the booking, this needs to come at the end of the program. So what I would do is I would move this from here, cut this out, and I'm gonna take it down to the end of task three and put it down here. Um, now obviously you won't have written your task three code yet, just make sure that you write it inside of that rebooking. So let's look at the task three. This is pretty heavily commented, um, so please feel free to read the comments as an explanation of why we're completing each of these different items. Our conditions for pricing, so which type of things qualify us for a better booking price? Well, if we take a look at the tables again here, we can see that the family ticket and the group ticket can offer some discount for the customers. In order to do that, how do we know if we qualify? If we take a look here, we can see that a group is anyone with six or more members. A family ticket is up to two adults or seniors and three children. So in order to test for that, what I've done is I'm creating a while loop that is going to run for as long as the number of tickets are greater than or equal to five. So if there are five people in attendance, then potentially that could be three children and two adults or two seniors, one adult, one senior. Also, if it's greater than five, it could qualify for a group because a group is more than six. So I'm gonna put this into a while loop and my strategy is to take the number of tickets that the customer requires and then continuously deduct from those if there is a family or group situation. While it's greater than five, this will continue to loop. My test is if adults plus seniors is greater than or equal to two. So it could be two adults, that could be two seniors, two adults, one adult, one senior, there's a combination going on here. But together, between those tickets, they would need to be at least two or more adults to qualify. For the children, I've indicated if it is greater than two. So three children qualify. So if it's greater than two, then it must be three or more. And this would be the condition for my if statement. So if this condition is true, then they will qualify for a family ticket. I'm gonna set the family tickets to be one. Now the next bit is I want to minus these tickets so that I can continue looping. And why is that important? Well, what if we had 20 people in our group and actually they could qualify for more than one family ticket? Or maybe they qualify for one family ticket and one group ticket. What we're looking to do is to minus every time that we allocate some sort of family or group. For the family here, I put my family tickets to one and then I'm going to go through this little for loop here to identify the adults and seniors and the children's. So you can just ignore this bit. I'm going to take this away completely actually so it doesn't confuse anybody and just look at this for testing the family ticket. Now the reason we're doing family first is actually purposeful also because if the the family is cheaper than the group, completing family first, then we will guarantee to pick up the condition of a family ticket being cheaper than a group and also we can allocate 
multiple family tickets and then use the remainder as a group possibility. Here I'm doing a for loop. Now the reason that I'm doing a for loop is because I know how many times I want to iterate. I want to go through this twice. Now I've also used an important order here as well because I'm going to be taking away the adult tickets before the senior tickets. If you had a party and it had three children, two adults and one senior, well, a senior ticket is cheaper than an adult ticket, it makes logical sense to take away the adult tickets first and leave the senior on the cheaper price. So because there's two adults, I'm going to iterate twice and I'm going to do, if the adult is greater than zero, then the adult ticket will be minus one and the number of tickets will be minus by one because I'm taking away one of those adult costs and we've assigned it to that group ticket. Next is the else section. If there are no adults, then it's gonna to go to the senior tickets. But otherwise, if there was an adult ticket straight away, it's gonna just jump back into another iteration of this loop and figure out who's our second adult ticket or second senior adult. So in the first iteration, we minus one of the two tickets for an adult or senior. And then in the second loop, we do a second one. Let's say in the first iteration, we did take out an adult ticket, but in the second one, there's only a senior left. So the same principle applies. The senior tickets become senior tickets minus one, and the number of tickets becomes number of tickets minus one. These are really important for a couple of reasons that we're minusing the tickets. One, because we have to get ourselves out of this loop. Two, because we need to perform calculations. These previously assigned adult tickets would need to be minus so they're not calculated twice because if they were calculated and there was a family ticket, then it would definitely cost more. You'd be saving nothing. And then lastly, because once we've done the family tickets, any remaining tickets would be checked for qualifying for a group. We loop through twice to get our two adult tickets. And then we know for sure that there are more than three children or three or more children. And we know definitely we've got our adult and senior. So we take our adult and senior and then we don't need to do any testing condition for the child. So we do two loops to get the adult and seniors. We've got our two people that qualify for the family as adults or seniors. And then next we take off the child tickets. So we do child tickets minus three, number of tickets minus three. In this iteration, I've now taken away three, four, five different tickets from the total number of tickets and I've added on a family ticket and then that's our first iteration through this while loop. Now if there were 10 people in attendance and that was six children and four adults, this will now loop again because if there were 10 people, I've taken one family ticket, I've minus my people by five, number of tickets minus by five, I've got five left, it's equal to or greater than five, it would continue to loop again. So the next thing we need to do is to calculate the group ticket. So that's my alternative to the if for establishing if this is a family ticket or not. So if they didn't qualify for the family ticket, then we wanna see if they qualify for the group ticket. So let's say that they were like six adults. Well, they would have come to this section and there were no children tickets and they wouldn't qualify for a family ticket. If they don't meet this condition for getting a family ticket, if they're not two in total with adults and seniors and three children, then the else option is to check for group. So in actual fact, let's put in a comment there, check for group. If the number of tickets is greater than or equal to six, that's our condition for a group, you need to be six people or more. So if it is greater than or equal to six, then we're gonna make all the remain, remaining tickets be a group. You look at the table again of pricing if you qualify for a group then everyone in that group gets their ticket for fifteen dollars i'm going to basically take the group tickets and assign it to be equal to however many tickets remain so whatever the number of tickets remaining are they will be group ones as long as there's more than six six or more people and then once i've done that i'll assign the number of tickets to zero and that's important because that's now going to allow us to exit this loop. So if they've made a group condition, everyone's getting a group ticket, 
there's nothing else to talk about we're going to exit that loop got the number of tickets set down to zero but also as well you want to make sure that you're not double calculating so we've set our number of tickets to zero to get out of the loop but we also need to make sure that any adult senior or child tickets are also set down to zero now i haven't set to zero the number of family tickets. You could have 11 people attending and get one family ticket and then six people on a group ticket. So I haven't zeroed down family tickets here. Okay, now in this next section, basically we need a way to be able to exit from this loop. The way that I've done that is to just create a break. So if this was not met, then the other option would be to break out of the loop and just continue with the tickets that we have. Now, using a break is um, controversial. Some may agree, some may not. An alternative to doing that would just be to set the number of tickets to zero. And that would also cause it to break out of the loop. But actually, in just looking at this quickly, I realize that this is a little bit flawed logic because you could have five tickets and those five tickets could all be adults and so they wouldn't qualify for this but also the number of tickets wouldn't be greater than or equal to five and so this next one wouldn't qualify either and actually we would be stuck in this loop with having five tickets but not being allocated to any of that. So actually I'm going to make a quick adjustment to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to be an elif. If it's this one first, if they don't qualify for family, it will check for the group. And then from that elif, I'm going to move my else out to here like that. And then you can use a break or if you don't want to use that, you can do number of tickets equals zero, and that would also take you out of the loop. Now we've adapted our tickets. We've either reassigned family tickets, we've assigned a group ticket, or we've decided, actually, we don't qualify for anything. We're gonna exit this loop. So now we need to do our calculations. Here is the calculation section, and it's very much the same as what we did in task one. So, it, I mean, it's actually identical code. So if the number of days was required was one, then it multiplies by the one day costs if the if it's not a one it multiplies by the two day costs remember this is also an area you could put in validation this is going to be recalculating based on all of these new assigned values that we have given so all the previous number of tickets they entered done we're now calculating on these ones so it's going to calculate all of this based on our new values and that is going to create for us a reduced ticket cost so our previous variable was ticket cost now we're having reduced ticket cost so we now have two values and then we're going to calculate from there a savings value so we get a variable we call it savings and we simply do the ticket cost so that's the original ticket cost minus our potential reduced ticket cost and then that's going to give us either a positive or negative value for the saving. Now, if it's a positive value, then that would mean that we save money. If it's a negative value, then our suggestions actually cost more money. So in order to complete that, what I've done is I've just used a simple if statement. And if the savings are greater than zero, so anything larger than zero is positive, it's a saving, you save money. So if that is true and it is, we're going to print out to the user. We have an alternative of price available you could save this many dollars. Now when you're doing your print statement make sure that you're leaving spaces and using quotations so the green here in the quotations is the text a comma to separate the variable the variable will be savings comma to go into the next oh I think we should have a little space there um, so you could have an alternative price saving this much through a family or group discount tickets. So that will print out on screen and then we'll give the user the option to confirm if they would like to take that ticket. So I have a variable called confirm. If you enter a one, then confirm will be true. Otherwise, it will be false. If confirm is true, then it will print the new value and a booking number. Otherwise, it's gonna print the original ticket cost plus the extras and the booking number. So throughout this, the booking number will be the same, whether it's this, the first or the second option, the original or not. And then following that, you would have the option here to rebook. Now you may also notice I have all of these. 
These are entirely for testing. They have no relevance to the program, they don't help the program to function, but when you're trying to work out these costs, you may find that you make some sort of error or you're not sure if these are calculating correctly when it's doing the minusing. So the way that we can do that is we can add in testing. At the end, you can print out all of the different values and compare them against what they should be. So in testing, you like hand calculate, oh, it should cost this much. There should be this many tickets remaining. Calculate it by hand, run the program, and then look at each of these variables to help you to test. Other really great ideas for when you're testing is you can add in testing positions here. Like, so if you wanna know if the while loop is actually activating and working, you just put in a little print and then call it like test while, and that will indicate that you're testing the while. If you wanna know if the if statement is activating or not, then you could do print if test. If you want to know if the elif is working, print the elif test, and so on and so forth. Printing these variables will help you to understand. So let's go through, hopefully it's gonna run. Oh dear, some sort of invalid syntax. Ah, uh, So the elif actually needs to have a condition here. My bad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this if from here and bring it up to here, elif brackets, the number of tickets is greater than six, shazam. Actually, you don't really need the brackets there, but unexpected indent. Ah, yes, so now we've taken all of this out of the previous one. So actually, we need to just bring each one of these in. Try that again. Now we're moving. Okay, how many people are in your group? Let's do 11. How many days? We're going to do day number one. How many adults do we require? I'm going to say two adults, three children, and six senior citizens. That's 11 people. Uh, no family and no group. Uh, no extra attractions this time because we just want to test our comparison. And then look at this. So this is actually showing us the test while worked, so it did a first loop of the while, and in that first while, it went to the first if test. Because we had two adults and three children, it jumped into here. It said, yes, we have enough tickets to qualify for a child, uh, for a family, sorry. So we came into here. But then after that, despite minusing this, we still had six seniors. So it went back into the while, Again, it reran that while loop up here, but this time we didn't qualify for the if, we qualified for the elif, and here you can see the elif test is working. Now it tells us, okay, actually we've got an alternative price available. You could save $22 through the family or group discount tickets. Would you like to select the improved ticket option? Well, yes, I would. And then here's some additional printing here to show us. So it says, okay, the group calculation, we had six people at $15 each. We had one family ticket. That means our new reduced price was 150 and that's $22 worth of saving. You may also actually want to add into that original ticket cost, perhaps just taking this one and making this just ticket cost. And this you could maybe call original price or something like that. And that's basically it. That's the task three solution. I hope that made good sense for you. Comments are here. If you have any questions on this, put them into the comments below. And also, if you think that you can see a better way of making this solution, a more streamlined way, a different interpretation of what it is that the question is asking for, then please add that into the comments, put in your own potential suggested code solution, get talking, get discussion, discussing, because this is just my interpretation of it. There are multiple ways to solve a program. But that is the end of uh, task three. That's the end of our pre-release material for the M2022 paper 2.2. I wish you the best of luck with your examinations and please check out my other playlists if you want more advice on how to tackle the exams themselves. Thanks for watching.